Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to tell you all about Bordeaux blends. Now, I'm pretty sure you've all heard of Bordeaux. The reason why I've chosen to do a video on it is because Bordeaux is probably one of the most important and influential wine regions in the world. It's also the place that has inspired all kinds of wine blends, from standard Bordeaux blends all the way to the Cape blend. Bordeaux is located in southwest France and it kind of hovers over two rivers that branch into an estuary. The main varietals that are grown here are Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc and Merlot. And these form the basis of all Bordeaux blends. Now, winemaking in Bordeaux and France overall is slightly different to how we do things in South Africa. In South Africa, we can grow grapes wherever we like, regardless of whether the soil's right, whether the weather's right. It's really up to the winemaker and the wine farmer. And if they want to plant a grape that isn't suited to the climate, well, they're free to do so. In France, things are very different. In the specific wine regions, you're only allowed to grow the certified wine grapes for that region. In Bordeaux, these are 13 grape varietals. Bordeaux is divided up into different sub-regions. On what they call the left bank, Merlot dominates the red blends, whereas on the right bank, Cabernet Sauvignon dominates the red blends. The reason for this differentiation is because of soil types. The right bank has very gravelly soil that favours Cabernet Sauvignon ripening, and the left bank has quite clay, wet soil that Merlot loves. So why did they decide to make blends in the first place? Why didn't they just make pure varietal Cabernet Sauvignon wines and pure varietal Merlot wines? Well, two reasons for this. The first is that these three different grapes, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc and Merlot, ripen at slightly different times. The advantage of this is if there's a freak hailstorm or especially rainy harvest, then all the grapes aren't lost. So it's kind of like a wine farmer's insurance policy. If Cabernet Sauvignon doesn't do so well in one year, it doesn't matter because they've got some Merlot and Cabernet Franc that they can mix into the blend. Another reason for making a wine blend is a matter of taste. Think about a cocktail. A cocktail is a blend of spirits and juices and other flavours that are meant to create something greater than the sum of all its parts. Take a mojito. You've got lime, sugar, mint leaves and rum shaken together with some ice and maybe a bit of soda water. Each of the ingredients adds its own taste and texture. And if you had each of those ingredients by themselves, they might not taste as good as the blended final product. Exactly the same principle goes into wine blending. Different grape varietals make wines that have different characters. And when these characters are combined, you can make a wine that you wouldn't necessarily be able to make from a single grape varietal. As you can imagine, no Bordeaux blend will taste the same. This isn't because the winemaker has blended different proportions of each component wine, but this is also because of variations in harvest, weather in that year, overall climate, and also the terroir. Today, I've got three different Bordeaux blends. They all come from the Western Cape, and I'm gonna go through each one, taste them, and then compare them for you. So, on to wine number one. This is the Valchemind Supjeshurte. I think I pronounced that right. My Afrikaans really isn't my strong point. And this comes from the farm that made the very first Bordeaux blend in the Western Cape in the 70s. So I thought it was only appropriate that it would feature in this video. It's got quite a nice, slightly clay brownish color. Mm, and the first thing that's hitting my nose is fresh, black currants and blackberries. There's also a slight sweetness, like a vanilla taste, and same kind of sweetness that you get from a fresh cigar. Wow. This is a beautiful, lively wine, full of fresh acidity, and along with all those really beautiful fresh fruit flavors that I mentioned, there's a slight meatiness, like a lightly cured meat. It's quite a medium bodied Bordeaux blend and Bordeaux blends can come quite heavy. Um, the tannins are very smooth. I wouldn't eat any food at all drinking this wine. 
but it's surprising because this blend is dominated by Cabernet Sauvignon, but only slightly. I think the proportions are 54% Cabernet Sauvignon and 42% Merlot and the rest Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Sauvignon brings tannins to a Bordeaux blend and Merlot brings body and all that ripe, gorgeous fruit. An awesome wine. And at only 70 rands, it's pretty good value for money. On to wine number two. This comes from one of my favorite farms, Rats Family Wines. I featured their Chenin Blanc in my first video, so go check that out if you want to see what his Chenin Blanc is like. This is his Red Jasper. It's a Bordeaux blend, but this time it's dominated by 60% Cabernet Franc, which you don't actually see a lot of Bordeaux blends with Cabernet Franc as the overriding varietal. I'm a huge fan of Cabernet Franc, so when I found this one, I was very happy indeed. So this is 2014 vintage. It's got a slight purpleness to the color of this wine. As a general rule, if a wine has that slight purple tinge, it means it's more youthful. And when a wine starts to acquire a slightly more uh, brick red, brown color, that's when you know it's aged for a little bit longer. And you can really pick up on that herbaceousness that is quite common to Cabernet Franc. The slight note of mahogany and also blueberries. This is a very elegant wine. It's nowhere near as bold and outgoing on the fruit as the Valhamid one I just tried. Very, very refined, very balanced, extremely smooth, but again, the tannins are slightly more pronounced than the last one I tried. But this one has a lovely long finish. When winemakers choose to make a blend, they make wine from each varietal separately and then blend them. And then that wine goes off and is matured. And the final one, Mere Lust Rubicon. This one's a 2012 vintage, so the oldest of all the three here. Mere Lust's Rubicon is absolutely renowned. Everyone knows about it who's really into their wine. It's not the cheapest wine you can buy, so definitely save this one for a special occasion, but it is worth every penny. I tried this one before, as you probably can tell. So yes, it's definitely got the most kind of brown tinge of all three wines in color. Mm. The nose on this wine is definitely one belonging to an older wine, that kind of slightly musty, developed aroma. And I'm also picking up, quite oddly enough, on melon smells, which obviously you don't normally expect in a Bordeaux blend. A lot more subdued on the nose than any of these wines, which you probably expect from an older wine. This Mirlas is also dominated by Cabernet Sauvignon, but unlike the Valhamind, which had 54% Cabernet Sauvignon, this one has 63%. And you can kind of tell because this one is a, quite a bit more tannic than the other one. So this would be the ideal wine to age because tannins really help preserve a wine. I'm picking up on lots of mahogany, a slight hint of tobacco, and also a slight smokiness. Definitely the most serious wine of all the ones I've chosen today. So, I'd say the Valhamind is the easier drinking, everyday, but still amazing wine. The Rats would be when you want something a little more special, a little more elegant, say if you're going out for a special dinner or having like a wonderful meal in a home, um, but it's still very reasonably priced. And then the Mere Lust is your graduation present, one that you might want to lay down for a few more years. Think of it as an investment piece. I hope you enjoyed my video about Bordeaux blends. All the details about the wine are in the description below. Please leave any comments, follow me on Twitter, and don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to drink more wine.